the biggest reveal in the trailer, the new playable character. Uh, fans know who she is, but tell, tell everyone who the new playable character is. Yeah, so in the first game, um, you play Corvo Itano, who is the royal protector wrongly accused of killing the empress, out to clear his name and take down this, uh, the loyalist conspiracy. The entire time, there's a 10-year-old girl uh, who the game sets up may or may not be your daughter, who is watching you. And if you play ghost-like and you don't kill anyone and you're very stealthy, then she does drawings on the, the wall of her bedroom that, that uh, present you as a father figure and they're very, uh, they're very calm. And if, by contrast, if you murder everybody and you play very violent, she's got like black crayon and she's doing these monstrous drawings. You're affecting her. And we've had so many players come to Raf or come to me or come to someone on the team and say like, wow, that moment where I walked into her room and I saw that drawing on the wall and I realized like uh, an impressionistic child is watching how I handle the situation and I changed my play style because of that. So anyway, long story short, there's something kind of magical about Emily for us in the game and as soon as we finished Dishonored 1, we began talking about how what we really felt energy about was continuing Emily's story. What kind of person would she grow up to be? What kind of empress would she be? And as you find out in the game, what kind of outlaw would she be? Right. Speaking of growing up, she's clearly not the same age she was when we last saw her. How old is she now? Yeah, the, the once 10-year-old girl is now the 25-year-old woman. She's uh, been through 15 years of history since the last game and uh, the events of Dishonored 2. What else can you tell us about the person that she's become and grown from since being in the original game and being such a little girl to being the beautiful young woman she is now? Well, it's, uh, you know, we talked a lot about what she would be like as a person because she was born the daughter of the Empress, very privileged life, living in Dunwall Tower, royalty, best education, all of that. But she was very imaginative. In the first game, she's always talking about someday I'm going to be on a, on a sailing ship tracking whales and fighting pirates. And, you know, she's an imaginative kid. But then this terrible thing happens where her mother is, there's a political assassination. Her mother's killed in front of her. She's taken away by these people, rescued by Corvo. And uh, so she's a person of privilege, but then who dealt with a big tragedy. And she's sort of marred by that. And uh, then she spends the next 15 years raised and educated by Corvo Otano. And so... Uh, that's kind of, she's a, like a, she's a hybrid of those things. So cool. You could play as her for the entire game. Is that correct? Yeah, the way we set the new game up is that you start the game 15 years after the Rat Plague has ended, and uh, you play for about the first 20 or 30 minutes as Emily. You get to kind of see a day in her life, and you get to see Corvo for the first time as a, a character moving around in the world. And then there's a dramatic, pivotal event that happens, and from that point you choose to finish the game as either Emily or pick it up as Corvo. And for the rest of the game, you're either Emily Caldwin or you're Corvo Otano. You saw that in the trailer that they introduced some new powers. Do you want to lead us into those? Can we take a look at those again? Yeah, so this what you saw there is Far Reach. Emily doesn't have Blink. Blink was a signature power uh, in the first game. There was a moment where all the powers were... Uh, optional, you bought them with runes and you upgrade the ones you want. There was a moment near the end of the project when uh, Rafael Colantonio, co-creative director, said, what if we just gave everybody Blink? And uh, it transformed the game. It was a signature mechanic. Uh, but so for Emily, it was kind of a bold call for us to say she doesn't have Blink. She's going to have Far Reach, which allows you to upgrade in many different ways. You can, like, you know, use it to pull yourself across. You can stick to walls. You can, like, yank people toward you and assassinate them in midair. You can do different things with it. It's as cool as Blink, but mechanically different. And at the end of that video, we saw another power she has called Shadow Walk that we'll be talking more about in the future. 